What's cracking, YouTube? It's your boy Doe back again with another reaction. Look, we got this. Why Luka Doncic thinks it's easier to score in the NBA? I got a couple of guesses, but you know what I'm saying? These people is endless. So let's 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 listen to what these folks gotta say. It's time for Mr. Oh no! Average went from just over 93 points, scoring over 110 per game this past year. The NBA's transition into analytics and a fast-paced positionless game definitely had a hand in that. Uh -huh. In a recent interview, Luka Doncic said it's easier to score in the NBA compared to playing in Europe. Besides the obvious yeah. differences in terms of court size More and space, yeah. violations, yeah. there are other reasons for his statement. I also want to say that I couldn't get this video out during the short off-season, so the clips I've used is from last year, but the same point applies. Anyways, let's get into it. The court size. Look at the tapes, he's bigger than most average guards. Both leagues have said. Dorel Wright said that the Euro League is more team oriented, and players usually don't score twenty plus points every game. Yeah, it's a collective effort of everyone scoring eight to twelve points. You you want to average sixty seven points? Go to China. Averaging twelve. Go to China. Is like averaging twenty two points in the NBA. Go be teammates with uh, Stephon Marbury. It's more showtime. Chris Singleton mentioned the same things, but also added the focus on defensive structure and concepts. Josh Powell further explains that if you can't play defense in the NBA, you get exposed. Mm -hmm. In Europe, their team concept and defense can mask these things, which further emphasizes the difficulty to score. The first thing about Luca on the Mavs is just the freedom and control he has. Yeah. Ever since they traded away Dennis Smith Jr., Luca has basically initiated all their actions, and the numbers back that up. Last year, Luca ranked second in both touches and time of possession. That's crazy. To start the season, Luca is again at the top of the league this year. Ranking fourth in touches and first in time of possession. Anyways, the Jokic all this led to his willingness nah, to make these tough contests. If I was a coach, Jokic is all know how deadly Jokic is keeping the ball. The impacts of it from James Harden's career. Even though Luca isn't the most efficient beyond the arc, he mixed up with volume, and the defense still has to respect these shots, especially late in the game. Yep. Luca took most of his threes when the defense went under the screen or sagged off him, because that's the correct decision. Because his, jump, his jumper was slow. The defender goes over the screen, he looked like he had no a little hop to it. Because the right move is to drive and collapse the defense and generate an easier open look for his team. You also rarely see these type of heat check shots in the Euro League, but these are just one yeah. indication of the freedom Luca has in the NBA. Everything about Luca's offensive game starts with these step back threes, but I'll come back to the impact of this later. As the previous basketball players have mentioned, one of the reasons it's harder to score in the EuroLeague is the team philosophy. Check out how the defense constantly collapses on yeah. the primary action, then recovers on shooters. Yeah. On the drive against the closeout, the big rotates over to help, but the weak side defender sinks low. Bro, While whatever team this nigga's playing against, disciplined as fuck. Look at that, bro. They made all the good rotations, and they're still in it, bro. Entering the dump-off pass, they're giving up the open three. How they look at it is that this is a further pass that shit like that happens though. The ladder more threatening. This is something they've always overlooked in the NBA, where they prioritize preventing threes instead. It was harder to gather the pass with a packed paint, and the offensive player had to fade away to get a shot off. Yeah. The defense is always forcing this to pass and biding time for the weak side rotations. See how all bro, bro, you team. see, you see that's crazy. You see that's crazy because look, buddy, buddy right here. Wait, is that Buddy? Yeah, Buddy right here. He comes up help. He, you would think he'd try to come down and try to get a block. Nah, he stayed right in a little short corner to prevent that pass. That was that's hella di discipline right there. They did mess up the last rotation. Yeah, the last rotation. The big, the big, uh, big ball head. He was slow. He was too slow on that. his whole career before entering the NBA. So it often leads to both good and bad results. Damn. An easy shot for himself. Of course, this is also aided by the smaller court. So the recovering distance is also less after collapsing, but not by as much as you think. There's also no three seconds in the key, so bigs can so big can just stay. And become a deterrent. This also means any penetration is definitely met by another defender who's already in position to help, making it harder to score for primary ball handlers like Luca. The last thing about the Euro League is how often they implement creative schemes. I won't go too in depth on this because I'm gonna make another video. But this wall defense but, is just in another. But then again, the NBA's uh, rules is meant to get faster pacing, uh, more scoring in. That, that's the rules. That's just how it is. Like you can't do the Charles Barkley no more. Now that caused bigs to be non-existent. You can't really be a big man. Crazy. Like the only thing that's really doing big man shit is like Joel Embiid. 
besides that, you can't really do the Charles Barkley be in the paint for 20 seconds. Because they want that ball. They want, they want shots to go up. Because cause the NBA, these players, they shoot, man, 40% is a good percentage. 40 to 50%, yeah, that's hella good percentage. And a lot of niggas is shooting high 40s in the mid-range, period. Some niggas are shooting 50% in the mid-range. And they're shooting almost 40% from three. Like, what's the league average? The league average three-point percentage is 36, 37%. So it's like, they want shots up. That's all that league wants. They want shots up. Because, shit, one of them bitches might fall. They, they gonna fall. Tration and kickouts. Even young Luca was stymied by this strategy. Now that we've checked out the difficulty of scoring the EuroLeague, we're moving on to scoring in the NBA. As past players have said, the NBA is more showtime and focuses yeah. more on those one-on-one -on -one situations. Prime example is when the Warriors started their small ball switching schemes. All that focuses on having the on-ball defender to shut down the offensive player. While some teams have trended towards a collapse and recover strategy, like the Bucks and the Raptors, weak side rotations aren't always consistent. As I said before, the analytics movement have made the NBA focus on preventive threes. So it can be that. Simmons, Van Fleet recovers to his man, but gives up an open lane to the rim. A key philosophy for them is jab at the primary action. It could be that too, or I could say, because on the defensive end, it's like, bro, if you really want to get to that rotation, you would do that. Like, do Euro do Euro players just want to get to the? They just not want to get to a league or nothing, but they just play harder. And recover to their man. Because defense is all effort. Off. The defense initially contains the penetration, but that extra jab by Van Fleet causes Butler to pick up his dribble. From this point, Butler's option is to pass it off. Retreat. Big long he needs to retreat. To the rim, but this will also give Gasol time to cover. Yeah. Or take and miss the contested dreaded mid-range jumper. This is where Luca comes in. Here's that same help defense to force Luca to pick up the dribble above the free throw line. But he got two steps. For a running floater, but look at how Luca fades backwards after seeing Pat Bev recovering. This leads to the flyby and a wide open floater one step away from the rim. This is essentially the same possession. Yeah. Kawhi helps one pass away to force Luca to pick up the dribble. Those yeah. extended steps allow him to get by Kawhi, but also allows Pat Bev to. And Pat Bev not going up no block. Pat momentum carrying him towards the rim. Luca fades back to create separation for another close floater. This brings us to another point. The NBA is full of athletic defenders, at least ones that are more athletic than Luca. So in the drive here, Pat Bev never loses a step. Damn. Since his intention is to stay in front of the drive, he will constantly slide towards this direction. When Luca spins, see how Pat Bev's next step is going towards the baseline, leaving him out of position to contest a shot. Euroleague defenders aren't always that athletic, so Luca's mm -hmm. penetration is already enough to create openings. Here he created some space, so he's going up against a recovering defender now. On the drive, he has a lane to get through, but gets ahead of himself with a behind the back, making him change direction back into his defender. Yeah. He's open. This time, he makes the right choice with the crossover and gets a step on his defender. However, his focus on keeping this advantage makes him lose his body control, leading to the offensive foul. In the NBA, he's always up against the best defenders, so he usually doesn't have that step on his defender without a screen. Luca picked up his dribble here in case PG strips it. Now Morris times his step to contest, but it doesn't matter because his momentum That's, is carrying bro. him towards the basket. It's it's like a step back layup, bro. That bro, it works every time, bro. I do that all the time. That's like. I don't even think I can do a regular layup no more. Cause I can I can bully ball like LeBron. Mm. Boom, boom, slow down. Play. Easy. And that's what Luca does a lot. Another fade back floater gets Luca another good look near the rim. He does that, that a lot. Is pull up and step back threes. Defenders will constantly press up on him. That means an aggressive drive will trigger the start of being ahead of his defender. Bradley here wouldn't allow that. So he slides and beats Luca to the spot. That slight fade allows Luca to create enough space for the short jumper. Mm -hmm. Of course, NBA defense isn't perfect, and Luca will get a step on his defender at some point. That's the Luca's jump shot is all in his wrist. Two -on -one like now. it's literally like this. This might seem like an easy choice. There's a few things that factor into his decision. If he continue to drive, Zubash could block his shot at the rim, or if he chooses to wrap around pass, it also allows PG, PG time to, to get the ball and dig down on the pass. Another factor is hopping instead of a 1 2 to get the floater off before Subash can contest. Pat Bev closes the gap here to prevent the 3. When Luca shows a drive to the left, check out how Pat oh, yeah. jumps in his path, but it also opens up the lane for Luca. Here's that same 2 on 1 situation and a hop floater to get it off quickly. 
This is slightly different in pick and roll. Bro, James Harden got the best floater package in the league. So they're typically more Sorry. aggressive on help. This is when Luca goes for the mm. rim, and this slight ball fake gets a defender in the air and out of position to contest this layup. Looking back at this, see how the first step gets Jordan sliding the mm. mm. <laughs> Luca crazy. Luca doesn't create space by fading since the defender is trailing and chooses a step through to create that same separation. On the pick and roll, Luca uses that same euro. Yeah. But Kaminsky didn't bite on the first step. When Luca steps through, Kaminsky instinctively cuts him off with his body. This is enough contact to warrant a foul, but it also gets Kaminsky backing off for an open floater. Mm -hmm. Against quicker defenders, you'll see them continuously backtrack. Luca knows the defender is trailing, so he doesn't fade back, but just jumps straight up instead. Combine both of this, and you get the separation and the open floater. Yeah. Another thing about Luca scoring in the NBA is just how it's refereed. Defense have been getting pretty physical with Luca, and they get all up in his grill. Luca uses that against defense by drawing. I think. <laughs> Oh, fuck. That was an accident. My fault. But I think, like, when I was in high school, I didn't play that good until my senior year. Junior year, I was a bullshitter. I was playing around, not going to... No, no, no. We ain't going to talk about that. But when I played high school, it was, like, overthinking, making shit complicated. Bro, when you keep it simple, bro, and you start realizing it's more about build... Then you're going to be good, bro. You're going to be straight, bro. If you can tell, like, okay, you got to get your senses up. If you feel like a nigga about to be trailing you, you going to go straight up and don't, don't, don't do the floater and do the fadeaway. Like, you just going to, like, when you get your senses, bro, it's going to make it a lot easier to play basketball. I haven't seen like when you figure out people's tendencies, these type of moves as much as the NBA. and it's not even hard to think about people's tendencies. Just think about a human. Two free throws. And, uh, what would a human do? Nine free throws a game. The it's average person free would free do this. The last thing I want to go over is how the defense respects passing ability. We've all heard and seen how the ability to score leads to more assist opportunities. Some hard way, nice. Does, is letting his passing create scoring opportunities. Key Gilchrist still got a job. Luca attacks the scramble defense, and Morris is in good position to pick him up. But Hardaway yeah. open. Morris Never mind. Stay in front of Luca, but that fading floater creates enough space for a good look. If we look back at this, keep your eyes on. I Luka. thought Reggie Jackson was at the uh, collapse. The ball, which is the most dangerous thing, because he was respecting Luca as a playmaker, leading to the corner three. Had Luca no. the drive, he could have gotten a decent secondary contest on the floater. Here's a closer look from another angle. Luo was in position to contest, but chose to cover the pass instead and gives up the open floater. Yep. Here's one last example. After the double screen, the slight hezzy reveals the Clippers' fear of his passing. Pat Bev and Hello. Cavaliers get stuck because they he thought did. he'd pick it out to KP. Because, look, Zubaj continues to Pat Beverly, he, he didn't even notice that fucking, uh, who is that, Dwight Powell? He didn't even notice Dwight Powell rolled. <laughs> look. Hold up. He even noticed the Dwight Powell rolled. Fuck. He still, he was about to go back out to the three-point line. Pat Bev and Harkless get stunned because they thought he would kick it out to KP. Subaj continues Why? to Why would he... the Powell roll, and Luka gets a good look for the floater. I know there are other stuff I haven't covered in depth, like those step-back threes, or even just math schemes like five-outs and high pick-and-rolls. All these contribute to making Luka's life easier as a scorer, like mm -hmm. the step-back causes defense to press up on him, which makes them susceptible to drive-bys. Five outs and high pick and rolls just spreads the floor even more, leading to less traffic on his drive. But I guess those are a bit more obvious, and Luca fans should be well aware of those. I think these Luca just nice, bro. Since it's not the most appealing or flashiest plays, but it is a huge reason why Luca. He, he takes his time, bro. Anyways, let me know why you guys think it's easier for Luca to score in the NBA, and maybe some things I haven't covered. As always, thanks for making it to the end of the video. Boy, Don't Luca nice as hell, story. man. That's all I got to say. Luca nice as hell. And he might be winning MVP this year. If Jokic keep playing crazy too, Jokic might be up there too. But yeah, besides that, man. Video over with, my niggas. Hit that like. That was... Bro, that's not even my outro. It's, uh... Well, that's, a, well, that's the end of the video, my guys. Hit the links in the description. Like, comment, subscribe. Comment videos I should watch next. And I catch y'all boys on the flip.